This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble, and we're gonna try and do it the right way now. Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown is a comedian uh, and uh, an old friend and uh, a regular participant in this program. He's been very good to do this. How much? I sent you a note the other day. Yes, yeah, huh? you said we've done eight, 178. 178. So this is 180, this episode. Wow. We're yeah. going gonna to make 200. This is like Seinfeld. Boy, <laughs> You know, we do these every couple of weeks, and I guess we never, I never thought they had added up, so I went to the files. And I, I had it just count for me how many how many uh, episodes there were in there, and it was uh, it was literally it was a uh, hundred and seventy eight. That's so, incredible. Yeah, yeah. So this is number one hundred and eighty. We should celebrate when we hit two hundred. You know, yeah. have a little have a little party and things that's, like that. That's when the syndication money comes in. <laughs> yeah. Last time we were talking, I was talking about a gas station chain named Bucky's. Bucky's, yeah. Never yeah. heard of it. Well, you never heard of it because they're not on the West Coast, but if you go to Texas, there's Bucky's. If you go to Georgia, there's Bucky's. If you go down to the Florida, there's Bucky's. Apparently, Bucky's is a very... And what it is, you pull in there, I understand, and you get gas. Or, I think you can, if you have an electric automobile, you can charge it. And then they've also got a, a restaurant there. So you can go in, have lunch, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, taking a respite from your trip. And if you're charging your car, it takes about 30 minutes for a charge, so you're in there while it's charging for 30 minutes. But anyway, um, I was going to, I said to you last time when we finished, I said, you, you, lo you love cars, don't you? Yes. Yeah, sure. you, you drive what now? You still drive the same car you've had for how many years? Uh, 13 years now. 13 years, and it's a... Toyota Camry, which is uh, yesterday I hit 485,000 miles. Wow. Wow. Are you ready so for I'm, I'm going to keep this. Uh, the way it's going, I should, by the end of the year, hit half a million. So f uh, uh, half a million miles in 13 years. Is that yeah, it? Yeah, well, yeah. In about 13 years, 14 years. Well, it had, it had 100 when I got it 13 years ago, so... Oh, I see. Well, my friend yeah. Shecky uh, has a, um, uh, I can't remember what kind of car it is, but it was his mother's, and it is 27 years old, okay? Wow. And he's put 60,000 miles on it. <laughs> <laughs> so he never uses it. He's like that little old lady from Pasadena, you know, only uses the car on Sundays. Does it have a garage? Yeah, he has a garage. Yeah, it's probably a beautiful car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the other day, uh, it's just a, 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 I can't remember what it is. I, I'm trying to remember. It's like a Honda or a Toyota. I can't remember something like that. And uh, it, uh, 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 I was getting out of the car one day after because he takes me down to the subway after we're through. And I go to open up the door, and the, the inside, you know, the little inside handle you pull on, mm -hmm. breaks off in my hand. <laughs> so there's no way to get out of the car. Wow. So I have just broken his 17, 27-year-old car. You know, and, and he says, well, I don't take that many people in the car anyway, and I can get them to go around and open the door for him." So I'm thinking about it. I'm always good at making, finding fixes for things, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how would you fix that problem that I couldn't open the door from the inside, but I do, don't want to have him have to get out of his seat and go around and open the door for me? Uh, he could roll the window down and open the door that's, from the outside. That's exactly it. He didn't even think of that. <laughs> and I was thinking about it. I went, oh, gee, you just roll the door down, then you can just pull on the handle and open the yeah. door. He said, it's working now. He has people he's taken in the car. And he's told them to do that, and it's no problem. They open the <laughs> door, they're out of it. Yeah. 
But 27-year-old car, you know. I mean, would you keep your car that long? You would say you want to keep it to a half a, half a million, and then what? And then I'll just, I'll just put it in a field and let it rest, I guess. Y- yeah. I thought you had a bigger car than that. I thought you had more of a muscle car. Oh, that was the old... I had a, I had a red Trans Am years yeah. ago. Yeah. 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 What happened to that? It just kind of... Yeah, I gave that to... Uh, somebody I met from Germany was over here and uh, I was trying to sell the car I wanted to get rid of it and everybody you know who actually wanted to buy it was Louis C.K. Oh really? This is the early 90s. He he said I want to drive and take it back to New York and I said do you have a garage? He goes no I'll park it in the street I said it'll be stolen in a day so I didn't sell it to him and uh, so I gave it to this person that lives in Germany and they uh they took it. They they had it shipped over there. So I don't know if it's still running around the autobahn or not. Why would you spend the money to ship a real used car? That yeah, they far? they they paid for the shipping. I didn't pay. For oh no, of course not. But um, uh, that was about. A, I think it was a thousand dollars to have it shipped on a boat. Yeah. So if you got a new car, what would you get? If I got a new car, well, if I was younger, I'd probably get something hot, but. Uh, now I like to be something quiet and smooth, like a Lexus. Really? Yeah, those are incredible. Yeah, but they're expensive, aren't they? Very expensive, yeah. There's, you have that kind of money, or would you do payments? I'd have, yeah, I don't have that kind of money. I'd have to win the lottery. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, cars right now are very expensive. You know, it's cars not, are so expensive right now. People that have like four-year-old cars are selling them to the dealer and getting more than they paid for them new. That somebody said, you know, um, uh, here here was the deal. What, what I hear the deal was, if you leased a car, you know, at the end of the lease, you get to buy it. Yeah. For a certain price, and then you could finance that. And that you'd be better off doing that because the car is worth more than when you got it. Something like First that. First time in history that's ever happened. Yeah, and that you would really make out by having... Oh, yeah, oh. the dealers are begging you to, oh, just uh, just turn it back in and... Uh, you know. Yeah, no, but no, you no, don't I'll turn it, it back in. You say, I'll take the buy option, and you buy yeah. it. And if you try to sell it the next day, you will get more for it then it, then it was literally You'll worth. double your money. You, you'll make a lot of money off of it. Yeah. 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 So you may as well lease. And then at the end of it, hey, have a good time. You know? Yeah. And you could keep paying for it. You keep making the payments. But if you suddenly decide you don't want to have the problem of owning it any longer, you can sell it. You can you probably could sell it back to a dealership and make more money. Oh, you can, Yeah. You want, never to hear, happened before. you want to hear the insane thing that I heard, and I don't know what airline it was. I think it was maybe Delta. But there was such a such a, a, a surge, you know, there was such a problem getting people into seats and airplanes and stuff like that because there were just too many people wanting to fly, especially over the July 4th weekend, that they offered on this one flight, they were offering anybody who wanted to give up their seat Ten thousand dollars. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm trying to figure out the economics of this. <laughs> Can you tell me how it's worth ten thousand dollars to tell somebody if they give up their seat, you'll pay them ten thousand uh, dollars? I couldn't figure that out either. Because what would they? They're going to have to. And this wasn't in like you know free tickets or anything like that. This was ten thousand dollars cash. Now my question to you is, if you were on that plane and they came over and they offered you ten thousand dollars to get out of your seat and take another flight or something like that, what would you do? Ah, uh, you gotta take that. You gotta, you gotta take, take it. it. Unless you're gonna be stuck there for a week, I don't know. You know, if you've got nothing to do with your life once you get home. Why not? Yeah, you know. Of course, then you go to the in inside to the to the place and buy another ticket to get you wherever you were going. And of course, it'll cost ten thousand dollars. But <laughs> you know, yeah. 
Well, Bernie Sanders has introduced a bill. I think if uh, if you have a reservation and they've sold it to somebody else, the airline should pay you fifty thousand dollars. Really? That'll never pass, but that's what he's got. Well, you know, it, it should pass because it'll make sure the airlines make sure that everybody who they sell a ticket to has a seat. That's yeah. what a res. You know, it was like that old de- deal on Seinfeld. You you watch Seinfeld? Oh, the rental car. Yeah. The rental car. When he goes and she says, "Well, uh, we don't have one currently available." He says, "Well, I reserved it," and she says, "Yeah, but we we don't have the car right now." And he said, well, "Let me explain. Don't you know what a reservation is? <laughs> you know, I, when you reserve a car, it's supposed to be there when you get there. I mean, they what? Who lost the concept of what a reservation is? Apparently, that's happening with hotels now too." Really? They're overbooking the room. So you get there and, what? We don't have a room for you. Yeah. Well, you don't overbook. You don't overbook. You take a reservation, and then that room is slotted for that yeah, person. And you, they always take the reservation than a card now, so they, they're they not going to get burned. So I don't know why they're doing that. but It's ridiculous. It's just, I know. It's, uh, the business business practice in America are horrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the uh, the airlines who we've what we bailed them out twice now. Yeah, yeah. And they keep screwing us. So. Well, they want to investigate. You know, what's going on with uh, uh, with all of this because it it's it's unreasonable. Now they ha- suppose they have a problem because pilots are quitting. They don't have enough pilots or something. So, Pilots and a lot of the uh, crews have quit, too. You can't fly without a full crew. Well, maybe they should start paying them more money or something. Maybe it's... It, why are they quitting? Is it the money? I, I haven't heard. I don't think... Yeah, pro- they probably need more money, and it's... Uh, I'm sure the way airlines... They're packed in these planes, it's got to be a very stressful job. Yeah. Oh, it, it, I'm sure it's a stressful job. But uh, um, it, it's it's amazing um, that they are uh, uh, they, they're they're facing this problem. Didn't they see it coming? You would think, yeah. You know, didn't they accommodate for it by saying, "Well, we better, maybe we just shouldn't send." So they're still trying to send up the same amount of flights that they used to send up, but they don't have the crews to take care of them. No. So sure. they really should have said, well, we're not going to sell these tickets for this flight because we can't get that flight in the air. They had too many flights to begin with anyway. So. And then the whole jam at the airports when you get there. I mean, I haven't flown. We haven't flown in, oh, God, maybe five, six years. You know, when those were that was a short puddle jumper up to Shelburne, up to Burlington, Vermont. Uh but I couldn't imagine going to Europe or someplace like that and having to deal with these airports. I mean, what's with the crowds there? There are only so many planes taking off. There are only so many people. Yeah, I don't understand any of it. I really don't. Uh, and it's it's incompetence on the part of the airlines. It's incompetence on the part of the government. Yeah, yeah. and uh, a lot of times now the old airplanes are, we canceled your flight, and if they they say we canceled it due to weather they're not required to get you a hotel so you're stuck in that wherever whatever city you're in and when are they required to get you a hotel if they cancel it due to a, a problem on their end but the, if they say it's a weather it's a problem and on they'll say uh, the weather even if it's a nice day yeah we had to kind of go it's a problem on god's end yeah 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 i don't understand by the way i never asked you this do you believe in God? Uh, no. Okay, me neither. So when we die, what happens? Uh, that's it. That's it? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? You see, I can't imagine that that's it. You it's know, the, I, no, it'll just be like the nothingness we had before we were born. I know, that scares me too. I'm scared now to think of what it was like before I was born. <laughs> You know, 
But what is the well, world? Maybe nothingness what? might be better than the well, hell we're living in now. I came up with a theory that when you die, this whole world dies with you. Does that make sense? That's interesting, yes. At least from your perspective. Yeah. You know, but if you're dead, what 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 is there? You know, I uh, they could they could scientifically there could be something. You know, there's this whole theory of the multiverse, for instance, uh, where there are several existences, several universes, parallel to each other, and that you simply are still existing in another one of those. Mm. I know it sounds crazy. Yeah, we, but but it does fit in with with a lot of scientific theory, uh, string theory, and so on and so forth. That there are the there are up to twelve other universes, string theory, I think, up to twelve other universes and a space between all of them, and that uh, you, you you exist in all those universes. Now there, I may not be a radio announcer; it may be something <laughs> else, uh, and that. Uh, that you still continue to exist in other other universes. You don't think that's true? I don't think so. Because it seems like, you know, here I am, I'm a walking, talking human being, and then I die? Are you afraid, yeah. of, are you afraid of dying? As Marlon Brando uh, said on his deathbed, what the fuck was that all about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's true, folks. Marlon Brando actually said that. <laughs> what the fuck was that all about? Uh, which is maybe the greatest deathbed line of all time. Profound, yeah. That and the one that all comedians live with, which was uh, Edwin Booth, Jim, John <laughs> Wilkes Booth's acting brother, successful actor brother. When he was dying, somebody said, is, is, is dying hard. And he said, no, comedy's hard. <laughs> Dying simple. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, you know, but, um, um, yeah, that was a great... But do you... Uh, so you, you are you afraid of dying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Not as much as I was, but... Uh, I have... As I get closer to it, I, I feel much more of a fear. Much really? more of huh. a fear, yeah. Every, every every day I wake up and I say, "Is this little pain I'm feeling what, it?" You know, like I when I got my prostate seeds implanted, the doctor who did it when he was telling me what he was going to do with all the radiation. Uh, I'm so surprised I don't glow in the dark, actually. <laughs> um, but he, I said to him, "I said, is this the thing that's going to kill me?" And he looked at me and he went, "No," you know, like you idiot. Um, but you know, I keep I get up every morning and I wonder, what is it that's going to get me? You know, is this it? You know, so I think Woody Allen said he got more afraid of death the older he got. I, I, I saw an interview with him recently that uh, Alan Alec Baldwin did with him, in mm -hmm. which uh, he asked him about was he afraid of dying and death. He says less now than I used to be. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. Okay, it's changed. Yeah. yeah, he said I. You know he. he of course, he's lived so long. He's like 88 now or something. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Echo, how old is Woody? Echo. He was born in December How old 35. is Woody Allen? 30. Woody Allen is 86 years old. 86 years old. You can ask. See, you don't know this. You can ask Alexa anything, and they she answers it. Well, I knew he was born in December 35. Right. Well, hold on a second. Uh, Echo, what is the distance from Earth to Mars? Today, Mars is 118.6 million miles from Earth. Oh, it's 118.6 million miles from Earth. That's pretty pretty close, actually, because I always remembered it's 244 million. Um, here, uh, Echo, how far is the Earth from the Sun? Be 93. 93. Yeah, 93. Well, she didn't answer. 93 million. Yeah, you you know those, huh? How about how about I knew that. I knew that, and I think the moon's a quarter of a million. Uh, yes, but quarter of a million. I mean, these things move, you know. So there's an apogee and a uh, perigee, uh, and uh, uh, 
but how far is Venus? Do you know how far Venus is? How no? far is Venus? Venus. I, Venus is fairly close, but I don't know that. Seventy-eight million miles from the sun, I think. Okay. Uh, Echo, how close is Venus to the sun? Today. Venus is 67.31 million miles oh, away from the sun. Oh, 67.3 million miles today. So my 78, I think, was correct as an average or something. Uh, yeah, it changes. So. Yeah, and I think, uh, uh, what do you call it, the other planet. <laughs> I'm out of it now. Uh, Mercury. Mercury. Mercury is, I think, 44. Uh, Echo, how close is Mercury to the sun? Today, Mercury is 29.58 million miles away from the sun. 29.58 million miles from the sun. So, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, I, what, I, what's great about Echo here is that she was able to tell me those date, those miles, as of where they are today. Oh. If I were to go there a half a year from now, they give me different distances. Yeah, you know, the, the, so you you got to get one of these. It's just uh, no, uh, you, well, you I, have you have to have the internet in order to get it. Yeah, aren't they spying on you through all this crap? I no, don't no, no, no. I, I, do you care? Come on, you you know your best line in your act, and it's true. <laughs> I use it all the time with people. You know, if somebody wants to steal my identity, let them have no life. <laughs> let them have it. You know, that's your best line. Yeah. I mean, it's true. What are we so worried about our identity, about them spying on us? What do you have to give them that's going to be of any interest to them? Well, I just find this, this ceaseless tracking to be annoying. I don't know. Well, I mean, look, you can say that, and that's probably the most innocent tracking that's going to happen in your life. But when you go down, when you go outside, there's probably a camera everywhere in San Francisco. There tra is, yeah. Tra tracking and, uh, your every getting... tracking your every movement. So I'd be more worried about that. I mean, how are you going to successfully rob a bank? Exactly, and they got facial recognition now. So. Yeah, if you go to rob a bank now, you go, give me all the money you got. Do you have an ATM card? <laughs> What's your PIN number? <laughs> or or given today's stuff, it, they would say to you, uh, well, hold on a second. Let me talk to the manager. I don't know how to give you all my money. You know? I mean, it's... it's uh, Patty Hearst would have never gone to that bank. Okay? Patty <laughs> um, t Today, when they rob from you, when they steal from you, they steal, you know, hacking into your accounts doing stuff like that so it's not like they have to put a mask on their face yeah um, and I just make sure that all the accounts that I have that have any uh, decent amount of uh, finances involved have a really good strong password you know and then I don't answer any of my email I mean this is what I said you know you're a Luddite and I'm becoming one <laughs> because the promise of the future that I believed in has turned into a nightmare. Right. <laughs> you know, you have a cough. Maybe I'm getting COVID. Yeah, maybe you're getting COVID. Right. Caught it from you over the phone. See? See? I'm not wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be terrible? We should start spreading the rumor that you can get uh, COVID get over, it the, over the phone. Over line. the phone. <laughs> over the phone from people. And do you know something? People would believe it. You could freak out a, a high amount of people with uh, that. Yeah, I bet you could. Yep, yep. You know. So let's so. do it. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's do it. Let's start. Just start the rumor. You can, <laughs> they just discovered you can get COVID over the phone. So don't call anybody who has COVID, and if they cough, <laughs> look the other way. <laughs> 
It's amazing. Well, that's what the uh, future, but the internet was supposed to open up the world and make us smarter, and it just turned out to be the world's biggest rumor mill. Well, I, I'll, t- I'll talk to you about this next time we talk. But uh, I had this guy Mal Sharp who used to do. Uh, oh yeah, I know him. The show with me on the, at KMEL, and we did this thing one day about the fact that the San Francisco was going to do something they only do once every twenty years, and that's drain the bay. <laughs> drain the bay. And we had people believing it. You know, so. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run out of time here, Larry. Yes, I, I didn't hope... think we'd have so much energy. Uh, We're both down. Uh, yes, right, but we, we do it. We do it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is, of course, the very talented Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, all righty, yes. Uh, hi, hello, everybody. We had a little trouble getting on tonight because, I don't know, something weird happened. I always start the stream, and then I start recording it, and when I all of a sudden went to look at the stream, it wasn't working, and uh, it said uh, it wasn't streaming any longer. And it it, uh, it it had stopped streaming here and it stopped recording. I don't know what I what happened. I have no idea, no idea. But anyway, so I just started everything all over again and we were off to the races. Now, I want to clear a few things up. I may as well bring our panel in here right now, our citizen panel, because uh, I, some of them have been making uh, have been online on the chat room making all kinds of accusations about my broadcasting ability uh, and that uh, hello there Charlie you're one of them actually there's this this uh, thread that goes I think this is an old bubbles interview or I'm having 30 minutes of deja vu I think it's some kind of technical problems and then John Redshaw says I hear uh, let's see here um, but, 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 but let me see and then I think you Charlie said, yes, this is from last November. Yeah. How'd you figure it was from last November? Well, that's the day they had on the YouTube stream. Yeah, so oh, the day. Oh, on the YouTube stream. Oh, let me see here. I See, that's part of the problem I had in the very beginning is that I had, uh, oh, I see. Okay, hold on a second. I got to change that. I got to change that. Here we go. Uh, let me see here. Uh, what's what's the uh, what what is this? This is uh, this is seven fifteen. Huh? Oh well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. That's not right. That's not right. I got to go here. Let me go here, and it's seven. Okay. Fifteen. Seven fifteen. Twenty two. Okay. Now twenty two. Okay, oops, so it's 23, 22, and then I go save, and now, everybody, you should have the right date up there for the show. See, I mean, it's a problem that I had because uh, when it went back and, and started doing a show, um, it, uh, it, for some reason, started streaming with another set of parameters and I so I had to change all those but I think we're going out okay now you would but think you know, as smart as the internet is it would automatically do it or ask you well you something. would think as smart as Google is because it's YouTube's problem you know uh, a lot of times you sometimes if you're doing a show let's say I'm doing a show and it's not working or something and I turn it off and I turn it back on again it just picks yeah. up the stream where it left off but it didn't do that in this case and I changed the uh, graphic on there, and, and I, I thought I had changed the date because I changed it to the 15th, but I didn't see either side of them were, like, wrong, too. So, But, no, that was a new Larry Bubbles Brown interview. So. Oh, okay. But that Good was enough, very though. good of you to, to think that that maybe was the answer to the, uh, to the uh, little, little trivia question we're having there. Hello. All that schooling has just paid off, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Josh, uh, you're back with us. You were away for a week, uh, and you were you took a trip, right? Uh, yes, I did. Where'd you go? Uh, we went all over. We went. Uh, I went to Idaho for a few days. I went to Nevada. I went to Utah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, just the path out and the path back went to a yeah 
Uh, good number of states. Yeah, that was about how many miles uh, the complete trip? We went uh, 5,200 miles. 5,200 oh. miles? Wow. And how much Far did away. the ga- how much did the gas cost you? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't add it up. But I just sort of ignored that. But uh, do you remember how much it would cost? Every, like when you you t- empty your tank was getting empty, um, so you fill it up. Yeah, the uh, you very if anyone who's ever traveled out west will understand you. When you stop out west and you have a chance to get gas, you get gas because you do go through places where you might work yourself in a bad spot if you don't but a number of times i filled up and it was at like half a tank and it was costing me like um fucking like 70 or 80 dollars or something it was oh wow it was crazy and i don't have like a i, I mean i have a jeep grand cherokee so i have a you know regular suv mm. and i don't have like a big truck or anything like that so the tank's not enormous or anything yeah i don't know how many gallons that was but it, it was around like 450 to 515 pretty much everywhere we went yeah wow um, wow well that 5200 5, miles i don't know if i'd want to drive that much on a vacation you know oh we've done that we've done that many times we get, well but you're spending most of your time driving <laughs> you know? uh we do do a lot of driving yeah but we see a lot of stuff yeah yeah well i've always liked driving i mean you know mm-hmm. i've always found it very relaxing and so on but now no, we don't mind. But I don't even know. I mean, I, you, you get a little tired here and there, you know. But it's overall, it's 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 good. I don't even know if I know how to drive anymore. I really, I'm serious <laughs> about it. I'm I have this fear that if I got behind the wheel of a car, I wouldn't know what to do. You know, I'm sure it would all come back to me in about ten minutes. But uh, you know, strange, just really. You, strange. you you have a bumper sticker on the back of your car that says, "If you don't like the way I drive, stay off of the sidewalk." <laughs> Okay. By the All way, right. I got to tell you, a funny, uh, where was it? Oh, here it is. I, I, you know, remember who Ruth Buzzy was? Yeah. From laughing years ago? She did a, a, a tweet that I, I thought was pretty funny. It says, vegans outlive meat eaters by nine years. Nine miserable, tortured, baconless years. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> my my sentiments exactly. What would we like? What would uh, I ask all of you? What would life be like without bacon? Not worth living. Pretty boring, right? <laughs> now I know yeah, I've got yeah. probably got some some vegetarians out there going, you, you, you know, you don't know what that bacon's doing to you. Mm. Well, it's been doing it to me for eighty two years. Yeah. And I know vegans that are dead right now. <laughs> I had a friend of mine a couple of years ago died. It was a vegan all her life. She went through her whole life never knowing the goodness of bacon. I have a business manager who's kosher. He's kosher because when he was raised, he was raised kosher. And somehow you get into that and you don't get out of it. So he doesn't eat bacon, doesn't eat uh, shellfish like lobster. Now, here are two things that are just, to me, God gave it to us as a, as a treat, okay? Um, the only thing we have in common with dogs, bacon, you know? So, I mean, uh, uh, but he, uh, he was, uh, you know, I said to him, I said, you've gone your whole life without having a lobster or, or, or ham or bacon. Uh, how does how does that how does that feel? He says, I don't know. I've never known it. You know. So if you never do it, you don't know what you're missing. So anyway, but he's he's going to a nice big Jewish heaven, okay, and I'm going to a deep deep dark Jewish hell. <laughs> lots of bacon, huh? And, With lots of bacon. Yeah, and and, no. and you know you know uh, 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 the, the fact is that. Uh, Oh, hello again. Hello to Kevin. Kevin's been away, too. How are you doing, Kev? Uh, anyway, I was just saying that uh, I uh, just, uh, you know, I, I just I just can't imagine a life without bacon. It's just one of those rare treats, you know. <laughs> Everything's better with bacon on top of it. Bacon is even better with bacon on top of it. I haven't ever tried that. But, oh, I have to mention this. Uh, uh, um, Jack will not be on tonight. 
Oh, okay. Did he fall again? Yeah, he yeah. called. No, he didn't fall. He called me, and he was just. Re- I think he was really depressed mm. uh, because um, he he just you know he he has a hard time walking right now, and uh, he, you know he has to use a, a walker, and now he's thinking maybe even a wheelchair. You know, and it, he was so depressed about it. He just didn't want to do a show tonight. He said, I tried to get up off the can tonight and I could barely do it. And I'm thinking I'm only a couple of years behind him because I've got neuropathy too, you know. But he, of course, has it based on his diabetes, which is far worse than what I've got. So, uh, uh, Jack. You're older than he is, aren't you? So, yeah, see, if you, if you know how to get a hold of Jack, you might write him a nice note. Cheer him up, get him back to doing what he does best, you know. Uh, I, I told him if he wanted to do a show tonight to let me know, but I haven't heard from him, so I assume uh, he's not going to be doing one tonight. Can we talk about COVID for a quick minute? Uh, if you so desire. Okay, first of all, I'm not a doctor, but anyhow, I was on a CDC Zoom panel this morning that happens once a week with me, and the newest variant that's coming out, everybody's heard of BA4 and 5. Mm-hmm. The newest variant is, is labeled BA2.75, where they come up with these numbers. The World Health Organization, I think, comes up with them. So it started in India. It, it's part of BA2 that never took off here in the United States. But it's in India, widespread. It's in California. It's in Germany. It's in Australia. And it's in the UK. They're not sure if it's going to take over as the main variant or not wow yep and so they 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 don't know if um prior sorry excuse me i just i got like notes in 15 places so they're 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 not sure let's see let me go back to this hold on just a second Uh, you're getting like phil now uh, (laughs) except for this is real new yeah yeah um uh, a lot of people predicted uh, a few months back or a year ago that COVID was going to be like the flu. They were wrong. It's it's just not going to. I'll tell you what uh, happened. But but, but, but uh, I will say, I'm I, I don't know. I should have done test tonight. Maybe I'll test during the show. But I just had COVID. The family just had COVID, and I've been more sicker with the flu. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, had, but... I had a cough and a sore throat. Sore throat was right probably about for two days. I've had a little stupid cough. But when I've had the flu, I've had a fever. I've been nauseous and stuff. And everybody that I know with this next strand right now, it's just been a cough. It, so it's getting weaker and now weaker. Now you're uh, saying that's all. But listen to me. Uh, Marjorie has been feeling hard. It's hard for been hard for her to breathe the last couple of days, although it gets better. Okay. <clears throat> and so she went to her doctor today and uh, because of this and asked him, and he well he ultimately said i'll send you to a pulmonologist just to make sure about it all but that what you've got really is the long haul of covid that this is a thing that you may have just had a little bit of it and all of a sudden it's like this. it just keeps on giving and keeps on giving and keeps on you could giving. have asthma now and never had it before yeah so uh uh, uh he said a lot i see a lot of people coming into me with symptoms that don't have it anymore you know yep. And uh, so that's, you got lucky, Brian. You my whole family got lucky, I guess. And yeah. everybody I talked to, my other car friends, the same thing. So uh, I don't know. Good. Yeah, but good. You might find yourself to be kind of like tired and sluggish, and so on. Around that, you know. I right, listen to Alan. I get tired and sluggish. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. monkeypox is spreading. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, here we go. Any, Come on, good man. news? Is there any good news? Come on, let's go to Josh. Josh, any good news? Yeah, let's go to Josh. Get some good news. I'm tired of all the bad news. They, they had they had report tonight on on our local, and it was someone that has some disease, and I forget what it was called. And it was one person that had this, and they said it's not spreading or anything, but nothing for anybody to panic about. But here's his like, address. The way, the way you freaking have it on the news. Idiot. <laughs> That's what Donald one, Trump one said page, about well, COVID. Well, let me give you an example. One case, very rare, don't panic. Here in New York, we have, they're going crazy over monkeypox, okay? They got people waiting in line to get monkeypox vaccinations, okay? <laughs> oh, boy, monkeypox this, monkeypox that. How many cases of monkeypox have we had in New York City? 
Well, I think it was something Three. like 37. Uh-uh. 414, <laughs> oh, four, according to this PVC oh, today. Oh, 414? In New York. Uh, in, in New York. It, how, big is, first... how big is the population of New York City? Yeah, well, that's the, that's the issue. Huh? Yes. Uh, the the population right. of New York City is slightly over 19 million people. Right. So it's not spreading as quickly yet. Uh, well, so 400 cases, and, man. And how do you get monkeypox? Well, yeah. it'd be, uh, don't kiss a monkey. How do you transmit monkeypox? Mainly that contact with something somebody that else. You get it from for. giving people monkey bites. There you go. Or kissing. Now monkey. there's a term oh, I haven't not, heard in not years. A it's what? not a respiratory disease. It's that's right. It's sexually transmitted. I believe. Yeah, but it, gays are getting it primarily. Well, I'm safe, man. well but but straight <laughs> are getting it too now. Straight, straight are getting. You know, they 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 spread this that all all gays thing happened uh, during HIV. And boy, were they wrong. What? Well, no, no. It, 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 there was a reason why it was it why they were you know they called it a gay uh, uh, what did they disease. call it? not gay disease but a gay pande pan epidemic. We're talking and, about the HIV. Right? HIV, right? And my nose is itching tonight. God, because uh, of the. This, the type of sex gays practice, the anal sex. It was much more transmissible, so more That's much right. more transmissible. Uh, right. And um, uh, so, it, that, well, I mean, the only way they could have sex was that way. And it was the only way in which you could take a sperm, which is a blood product, and combine it with blood because you would then rupture veins in the anus. All right, and that's what caused it to happen basically among gays, and it pretty much stayed in the gay community. I mean, it did get outside the gay community as well, uh, but it, it, largely it was still that was the you know, and I felt horrible about it because uh, uh, I had to give up my boyfriend, and uh, no, I, w I felt terrible about it because I had so many gay friends, and I had gay friends who had gay lovers. And gay friends and, that died of it. Well, yeah, but to think that the one thing that is an expression of your feeling for somebody else okay is now a thing of great fear and anticipation i thought that was just terrible i thought it was just horrible yeah the cdc clarified their statement today and it's going to end up in the media soon that it's not a gay it, it just so happens that two of the biggest groups of, of gay men were in an orgy a month and a half ago in two different places and they ended up all getting it and now straights are getting it. As a matter of fact, in New York, there are more straights than gays. Than you know, I'm not even going out. I haven't been out all week. Yeah, you're you're pretty safe against monkey. Mm -hmm. monkey well, I, but how about, how about how about how about COVID? I don't want to get COVID again. I don't either. I haven't got it yet. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to. You know, I mean, I, I think only two people on the show have had it. Yeah, yeah. And one yeah. person has it currently. The one person you oh. have, you have it. I got it. Let's see who else. Oh, that's right. Nobody right. else. That's right. Oh, wait a minute. Josh had Josh it. Josh got it. Josh had it. Yep. Uh, and uh, Vernon, you haven't had it yet, right? Okay. <clears throat> so, um, but just because my wife and I are dirty people. No. Uh, I think you had a case of bad luck in your case, Alex. I don't know. No, it wasn't bad luck. I mean, I I had to go to the emergency room. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying that. I don't know. Forget it. I mean, you would think the last place you'd get it would be a hospital, okay? You'd think if that you're would sitting be. sitting in a waiting room, though. And uh, she, she got it in the waiting room. And, yeah. and people in the waiting room, they're not as, how can we put it, as careful Smart. about those people. That's right. Know. That's right. So, anyway. So, anyway, our. Who brought it home to you? Well, who, who brought it home to me? Yeah. Uh, then she brought it home to you. Yeah, well, Marjorie brought it home here, and then I got it from her and followed her by about two days. And I never got it as badly, but it's still, I, I was, I've been dog tired ever since. Mm -hmm. You know, it does, it does continue to affect you. So, Kevin, where did you go? I saw that you were at some uh, air shows and stuff up in Oregon and stuff like that. No, I went to. Uh... I went up to see my buddy's wife, you know, the one that passed away from ALS. ALS. Yeah. To visit Ooh, that's her. a horrible way to go. Yeah. What's that? That's a horrible way to go. I know yeah, the things that Alan would like to talk about. 
No, no. Actually, don't know much about it, but I have had a friend die of it. So, but how was your how was your trip? It was real good. Went up there and hung out. Saw a couple people I hadn't seen for a while, and went out to the uh, Evergreen Air Space Air and Space Museum yeah. and uh, saw the Spruce Goose and a bunch of airplanes. Oh, the Spruce Goose really... is up there, isn't it? Yeah, McMinnville, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Alan, Alan always property. has to join in. No, I, well, I own rental property in McMinnville. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I rent it from you? You wouldn't want to. Why? But yeah. Why is it, it a terrible place? I know it's. They're just. They're no, just he's, a, he's a terrible landlord. You're, you're probably I'm getting, <laughs> Yeah, you, I'm, I'm sure you have a lot nicer place than those places. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, um, our president uh, today went to uh, went to uh, Saudi Arabia and is now taking great heat for a fist bump. Yeah, Phil sent me that message. Jesus. What message? Oh, that, that he sh didn't shake hands. He fist bumped like, oh, it's okay. Mm. Well, he... like, everybody's fist pumping because yeah, of it's safer than shaking of hands. Yeah, of course. Of course they are. Yeah. You know, he, he was, although Biden stepped off the stage uh, in Israel and went to shake somebody's hand and there was nobody there, that was kind of cute. <laughs> but they made a big deal that the Saudi Arabia press was the ones that got it and posted it everywhere and showed everybody that oh, look, the no, U.S. No. Is good with us. No, that was that, was that was that was a, a a regular a press opportunity. I mean, you know, he pulls up to the whatever that place is that the shake or the MS. What's he called? MSB or MBS? MBS. Yes. Uh, Mohammed Sheikh bin, bin, bin Salman. Anyway, uh, he said he told him off, you know, he, for Khashoggi and so on, and then got down on his knees and blew him for gas. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and remember, Trump, right after he died, Trump said he will he will make whoever did that held accountable. He made a big deal about that, and he didn't do shit. Yeah. It's like doing. he didn't build the wall. <clears throat> Well, you know, I mean, it, 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 I don't think we need to really go after his oil. You know, I don't know why we did, why we are. Uh, there is, we, we can start a, drilling for oil here and probably taking care of our needs and getting it from other places. We drill enough oil to handle 100% of our oil needs. Yeah, so let's do it, you know. It's just that they... Texas is the new earthquake. On the market for more money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I mean, it. it uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy with the, the, the gas is going down. The prices on gas. So I mean, as Josh well, was driving trip, along the journey. highway, he was saving money. What? This, this whole trip to Saudi Arabia is about food. They want to get the, the Ara Arabian Saudi Arabia. To pump more oil out of their oil fields so that the price of uh, crude oil goes down and Putin doesn't get as much money for the Russian oil. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But I mean, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, look, we, we have a problem with, <coughs> with, uh, with Joe Biden. No question about it. But they're on him for every. He can't do anything right. You knew that he wasn't going to have this meeting in Saudi Arabia without heat from people because they're just honest case every time they can and I think he did what I would have done I, would, I wanted to go to him talk to him like using getting the oil from there and so on and so forth but if, on the other hand he uh, uh, you know he did say that I told him that I I know he killed uh, Khashoggi and that uh, uh, the United States doesn't stand for this sort of thing. Now that we've got that piece of work, and as I say, then he dropped to his knees and begged for oil. You know, so I mean, uh, but it, 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 you know, he did, he didn't just let him get away with it. All right. So, and I'm sure MBS or whatever his name is, is it M? What is it? MBS. Yeah. MBS. Yeah. MBS. Uh, probably knew he was going to get a ration of shit about that. 
you know, so he was probably ready for it. And he and he said he had an excuse. He just said, I didn't do it. I'm sorry. You know. Uh, and of course he didn't do it. Other people did it for him. Yeah. Okay. He, yeah, he ordered it. And do you think he really on gave his it? command? No. What, what do I say? You think what? I said, do you think he really gave a shit? No. No, of course not. So he's over there. He's playing. But you know how petty? How petty are you? Playing with us. Uh, and I hate to use the term petty because that really takes this whole thing and turns it into a smaller thing than it really is. But how petty do you have to be when you go around killing people in another country or writing crap about you? You know, it's just you've got more money than you'll ever need. You have a a, a, a plush life. Uh, what do you need with having to kill people like that? That's what I don't understand about some people. Of course, the guy's only 35 years old, so he's still a kid and probably doesn't know better, I guess. I guess that's the excuse. Yeah, I don't buy that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, where, what, what was there some other item I saw in the news? Not really. There wasn't much, you know. Uh, oh, nothing but a bunch of secret White House tapes have been erased. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Uh, the well, the Secret yeah. Service, Service tapes, yeah. yeah. Uh, they they were this they were this <laughs> tapes from the again from the, the tapes from the fifth and the sixth of January. Text messages. And they claim the reason it happened was they were switching over to new cell phones and they erased the old ones. They don't have the cloud, do they? <laughs> well, they say they may according be according to the committee. According yeah. to the committee, they're going to try to recreate them. Yeah. From the cloud. Oh, okay. Well, I hope so. That would yeah, be they erased the cloud, too. Yeah. <laughs> the cloud disappeared. It rained. So, anyway. Is that why it's been so blue today? I, you know. <laughs> all the clouds have been erased. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. It, it's, uh, uh, on, on, a good, on a good news note, the murder rate is going down in our city. In your city? Yeah. Well, oh, good. just in time for me to get there. Anybody? Anybody? Oh, you you're going to his city? I'm going to Kentucky. Oh, okay. Why are you going to Kentucky? A family reunion. Oh, okay. All right. Ah, what city? <clears throat> ah, well, that's just down the road a little bit. Yeah. Huh? Jeff, are you there? I see you. Your camera isn't on. It's not. No, no, it's not. It was. No, never was. Never well, at least we we aren't getting your browsers off. <laughs> His browser. Yeah. Off. <laughs> well, just go over to go over to your camera, and you I should be able to turn it on from there. Hmm. How, where does he turn it on, folks? I I don't want to go. Uh, to... Oh, oh, Pam. <laughs> no, no, she's. Sleepy land. Can we turn it off, you There you there go. You there you Yay. go. Oh, yeah. Hey, how do you like that? Yeah, because yeah. your name was up there, and I didn't hear for anything from you, and I figured, yeah, hey, was... maybe he's, he's, he's just up there. You know, and then I figured, well, maybe he is on there, but he doesn't know his camera isn't on. Yeah, it was on. I, I, I remember I adjusted my head. <laughs> you would just, oh, you know what? You because I think you can see yourself on yours. Well, no, you shouldn't be able. I see myself. I can yeah. see myself. I can see myself. <laughs> Yay! Oh boy. So anyway, um, anything in the news you want to talk about, Josh? God. Well, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on the last few days. It's much different. Uh, I do think that it's whatever has happened to the U.S. Secret Service in the last couple of years, and it's not really a Trump thing. It started well before Trump. Well, well don't you remember this went back? Did then this go back? Did this did this go back? Is I'm trying to remember when they found all those Secret Service guys partying. Uh, yeah, that was under the Obama, Obama administration. Yeah, and yeah. there was some stuff going on in the, the Bush term. I mean. You know, I really don't know what's happened there. They've changed directors a few times, and I mean, it's just it's shameful. I mean, I I I think it's sick. You know, I mean, I come from a pretty small town, 
and um, he is not there anymore. But when I was young, we had a really good family friend who, who was from here, but had left and, you know, he joined the military and when he got out, he became an agent in the U.S. Secret Service, um, which was then under the Treasury. And after a couple of years, he was able to get a job in the protective division. Mm-hmm. And for about four years, he was he was a body man on Bill Clinton's detail. Um, I mean, he was a full-time uh, body man. I mean, you know, uh, all the time at the White House, traveled everywhere. And I knew him pretty well, so I knew a lot about the Secret Service and about how they worked and all that because he would come home and uh, they lived nearby and I would see him. And uh, I had a lot of stuff that he had President Clinton sign for me at one time, you know, because he knew that I really liked President Clinton, you know, when I was in, still in middle school and everything like that. So I had a lot of nice personal things that he had him sign for me and all that. And it just seems like since, you know, ever since uh, not too long after that, it just went, as an organization, it just went downhill. And I, I just don't, I don't know what, well, I don't know what is going on, but, you know, they have to, they have to get it cleaned up. I mean, I thought it was pretty disturbing when I read, you know, that, and this was months ago, that, you know, when President Biden took office, that he basically said anybody that had been working on Trump's detail, he had them all dismissed, and he went back to guys that he knew and trusted. I think it's pretty bad. Mm-hmm. The President of the United States has, you know, reservations about his own, his own detail. I mean, I, I think that's someone's going to have to get a handle on that somewhere. Yeah, I mean, no, the guy, I guess the guy, I guess the guys who are Secret Service now were Secret Service under Trump as well, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. Now, when Biden came into office, he he had the detail that worked Trump reassigned oh, okay. to like other places. They're still in the protective division, but they're no longer on the president. By the way, by the way, I am correct in saying that uh, it is still part. Of the Secret Service is part of the Treasury Department. No, they're not anymore. Well, not After anymore. September 11th. After September 11th, they reassigned it under the Department of Homeland Security, and there are a lot of people who believe that that's when the problem started, and they've never stopped. Well, they've had problems, though, before, though, as you say. I mean, I don't remember hearing nearly as much in the in the 1990s. No, it's, of course not. It's been not, really bad, like, the last 15 years. But probably. you're saying that in the, as of November, they are no longer part of the Treasury Department? No, no, no. After... They they stopped that in two thousand and what like two thousand and two when they okay. created right. the Department of Homeland Security on after September eleventh. Okay, so it's been part of DHS now for what you know about twenty years. What does the Department of Homeland Security know about protection and guns and uh, you know policing as it were? Because that's really what the Secret Service does among other things. You know, Homeland Security is a little more like you know, touchy feeling and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's probably not how it should be. They probably need to, to go back. But, I mean, regardless of whose umbrella it's under, they need a serious cleaning of house. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know what, what the hell's going on. But, I mean, you know, I, I just don't like some of the things that I have heard and I've read. You know, I remember hearing that conversation mm-hmm. about the you know, during the Capitol attack, you know, where the vice president didn't want to leave. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't know how secure the room they were in was or whatever, but this whole deal about them not leaving the Capitol because he didn't really want to, I mean, yeah, I don't care. I mean, uh, to me, the, the, there's an ongoing, yeah. you know, fucking attack. He, I don't care if you want to get in the car or not. We'll pick you up and yeah. throw you in. You're leaving. Uh, Vernon's, <laughs> got, yeah. Vernon's got his hand up. Vernon. Uh, I've begun reading that Carol Lennox book uh, called Zero Fail, which is about the Secret Service, and I haven't gotten all the way through the book, but I have gone through the chapter about the Kennedy assassination, and it's rather eye-opening that the, the detail, number one, was too small for that trip, and they were all exhausted, and several of the agents had gotten drunk the night before Kennedy was assassinated. Oh, that's good. Well, also, we didn't take the same pr- procedures we do today to protect a president, you know. I mean, the last time a president... When Johnson, when Johnson, when Johnson was sworn in, he, 
he did not like the Secret Service at all. He was threatening to 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 send them back to Treasury to, to go hunting for counterfeiters and bring in a detail of FBI agents to protect him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, well, they 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 swarmed him quite a bit, you know, in an overreaction afterwards, and he was not fond of being hovered over. You know, there's a tape of him calling somebody and asking them to find out how many agents were on Kennedy the day that he was shot and how many agents are on me now. And by tomorrow, I want it put back to how many agents were on Kennedy. And if I don't ever have to go to the bathroom again, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, but when Kennedy, when, said, when Kennedy you know, was shot, we weren't as, uh, as aware of the need to protect the president. I mean... The only other incident we had had near that time was Truman, I think, when somebody attacked the, uh, was it, the, the, he, the, 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 Truman was, wasn't in the White House for a couple of years. He was in mm. Blair House mm. because they were redecorating, yeah. okay? And uh, some Puerto Rican extremists attacked yeah. uh, the, uh, the Blair House. But that was the closest they ever came to that, and the, and and uh, Truman wasn't even there, I don't think. Uh, but that was the closest they had come in recent times. Uh, in recent times, the other who was the other one? Uh, who was uh, was Lincoln the first? The other one, the closest to to Truman, or was it Garfield? When was Garfield president? Garfield. Garfield. Yeah, they had. I mean, you know, by the time Kennedy was shot, I mean, three presidents had been shot. You know. I mean, yeah, but it was it, 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 it wasn't considered. You know, I mean, you protected them. That's why you had a protective service. But yeah. they didn't. They didn't do the kind of things they do. No, now. no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't like it was today, where I mean, you literally can't get within. You know, I, I mean, you talk to my friend. Five hundred yards. You talk to my friend Shecky about the time that Obama appeared on. Uh, 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 on the Letterman show, and the kind of secret service that suddenly descends on the place, mm -hmm. you know, and the sure. rules and regulations and the things you got to do and can't do, and blah, 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 blah. And you got to present everybody's name who's going to be in the building. You know, mm -hmm. well, we have a studio audience. Well, we'll watch them carefully, you know. So, I mean, uh, they, it, today they are a little more protective of the president than they ever have been because. People just want to kill who was ever his president, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, sometimes these guys get lucky, but with the wrong presidents, you know. So. What yeah, I mean, it's just uh, you know. So I don't. I mean, it's it seems to be. It seems to have you know some incompetence and some corruption, and yeah, uh, those are the last two things that you want in an agency, or at least a division of an agency where their job is to protect the most important people in the entire world. Can I, uh, can uh, I, you know, yeah, um, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, it, it's just, it's, it's getting to me that there's something happening right now that has been bothering me. And that is, you know, I read a list of things that this president had done, okay, or, or the Trump had done. And all the pe things they found out about him, all the things that they're mm -hmm. they're having investigations. I mean, the New York District Attorney has a case working against him. The uh, 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 what do you call it? The New York uh, uh, Attorney General has a case against him. Uh, there are cases against him in Georgia now, where they're thinking of putting indicting him for ins insurrection uh, uh, for trying to fix their election by f trying to force people to do things it, all this stuff I mean it's unrelenting there are about 10 different things against him right now plus all the crap you've been hearing the last couple of weeks and yet no word of the Justice Department lifting a finger and this is kind of getting to me now because if anybody deserved to get indicted for any number of things it's Donald Trump mm -hmm. I mean and he's go is he going to get away with it? Well, he thinks that by, by announcing his uh, presidential run early, that that'll make uh, uh, Merrick Garland back off ever doing anything. Just by announcing that he's going to run. Do you think that would hold Merrick Garland back? He thinks it will. Yeah. 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 He thinks it will. 
I, I don't think it will. I mean, I, I think that if you've got a case against somebody. I would hope not. I would hope not. And this witness tampering shit that uh, Liz Cheney yeah. has, has uh, talked about in the last, the last two uh, uh, committee, what do you call it, videos, the uh, public hearings. You know, if it were you or me, we'd already be in handcuffs. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I'm just wondering how long, you know, like, I understand you're reticent <clears throat> to go after a former president because that's, you know, it looks like it's some, we start looking like a South American country, you know. Uh, but this is a case where this president actually created a riot. Okay. He created a riot. He didn't just kind of show up, give a speech, and oh my it God, wasn't they just a riot. It was an he tried to take over the fucking government. Yep. He had plans to take over the government. All this from a guy who was on a game show on television. You know, <laughs> I mean, how stupid yeah. were Americans to even? Well, of course, they didn't elect him. He never got elected by popular no. vote. But geez, almighty! I mean, come on, America! You know, and, and there's still people who think this guy's terrific. How mm -hmm. can you watch those hearings oh, yeah. and think anything less than this guy is a big scumbag? Does Does well, Adrian? Them, the does people a, who watch yeah. the people who support Trump think that that's all the witness? Yeah. Does Adrian ever ask about him, Brian? No, but she knew during the election that he was the person that I didn't want to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. But then we were watching something the other day. Are you growing I, a mustache? I'm, I was doing my COVID thing, but I, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I was doing a COVID, trying to grow something, but it's not that. I got to shave it or uh, when I sleep back with the wife, she's going to kick me out of bed. Yeah, you kind of look like you're getting to look like a, a used car salesman. <laughs> you know, but uh, I, I did my test and uh, no COVID. All right. Oh, good for you! Uh, right on, bravo! <clears throat> I stayed up all night, night past <laughs> all night. Can I try that line again? I stayed up all night studying, cramming for my test. Yeah, <laughs> and I passed it. So you know. Yeah, what, wait, what is passing your COVID test? Being, having COVID or not having COVID? Not having uh, I see, okay. I thought the object was, oh, let's see who's got COVID here. It's, it's funny because our son's been in his room like nonstop playing games all summer. Mm -hmm. And so he's like very antisocial and he didn't get it. <laughs> he went mm -hmm. from, 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 you know, from Tiffany's brother-in-law to her sister, then to her and then to Stephanie to Adrian to me, but Simon's been like. Well, that's the value of video games, I guess, huh? What happens yeah. if he? What happens if Simon is immune? That would be great, right? Mm -hmm. Is anybody immune? Well, they think that there might be some people. I don't know how yeah. they're finding that out or where they're coming up with. How it, do but... they know how many people actually got COVID? I mean, come on, you know, I can't. The numbers, the, the testing numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, I take. Everybody I, reports to the CDC. I, or the, I took my test. Uh, I took my test. And I didn't report it to the CDC. No, but whoever tested you. No, oh, I took. talking about your at home. That's why the numbers are low. On, yeah. On testing, don't because they don't know. They're probably about five times what the testing shows because they don't know because of home tests. Yeah. Now, how good are these tests that you get at home? Yeah, those tests, the government. I hear they're pretty good. You'd have to ask Brian. He's the expert. I have eight of those now waiting. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I got a bunch, too. So I how get... do you even report to the CDC if you come up positive? Well, you report to your doctor, and your doctor reports to the health department. Oh. Well, I reported to my doctor that we th we had it and that we wanted the Pax Paxlovid. <laughs> and uh, so we... Um, uh, so he probably then turned the information over. Wow. I did that rat. Flu. You know. Fair flu. I did fair flu daytime every four hours, and I did nighttime before I went to bed. Fair flu. I, I got rid of it so quick. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe that's the cure. Maybe Brian came up with the cure. No, we all I know. Almost, we, I almost started taking it when Adrian had it because I knew I was going to get it. Anyway. We all know it's ivermectin, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and bleach. Don't oh, by the, the way, by the way, the other night on this program, there was some terrible information that was passed by Alan, by Brian, by several people here, including myself, about how to clean your pots on your switches. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, it, it, uh, a pot, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're listening to me now, is not the thing you smoke. It's on a control board like the one here, and they slide up back and forth, and after a while, sometimes they get scratchy, and then what you do is you take a pot cleaner, attenuator cleaner, and you spray it in there and move it back and forth, and then it loosens it up and gets it uh, going. Well, somebody on my uh, Facebook page said, there's a better way of doing it, and it's easier for you to do, uh, and it's uh, the, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, use isopropyl alcohol. That'll work. Okay, isopropyl alcohol will do it, and, uh, I remember now when I was a when I was a kid, and we I worked at radio stations. We cleaned our pots with carbon tetrachloride. Oh, remember carbon? Anybody remember carbon? Isn't that a cancer causing agent? Well, you you know it. Carcinogenic. I'm sure. Carcinogenic. Huh? Carcinogenic. It's carcinogenic. Yeah. yeah, very. Oh well, maybe that's the reason why I got prostate that's cancer. Why it works so good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really. But 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 you can use isopropyl alcohol will do it. So okay. a lot of the cleaners in the can, the main ingredient is isopropyl alcohol. I don't think so. I think it's a bunch of other stuff too. I know, I have a can of it in the other room. Well, there's different. Even WD forty puts out some of it. Because I had I, this one's never gone bad on me, but my other board kind of got scratched. What happens is that when they assemble the potentiometer, they put a little bit of oil in there to keep it lubricated. Mm -hmm. And the oil dries up, and when it dries up, it, it, it affects the performance. And so people that you can rather just play with the knob for hours, or you can spray the cleaner in there. By the way, I, it, we were getting a new uh, couch tomorrow, but before the couch, we got, a, we got a new rug. So we removed the old rug, and all of a sudden I noticed that under the rug, where they had, when we first moved in, uh, found your lease no sanded the the, the 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 wood and then varnished it uh, the varnish is kind of like faded mm. on the wood I can see this big mark it turn white huh it turn white? not white, it white but it's wood it's it's kind of tan now instead of mm -hmm. dark brown so uh, what the other problem we have and and it's all around is Marjorie got into this whole thing when she got crazy about growing plants. So she would put you know, put a twig in some place and then all of a sudden it's a big bushy plant. And then she'd water them. And the water would spill out and we got these marks on the floor all over the house from where she was doing the water. And I told her, I, I yelled at her about it and she was mad that I was yelling at her about it. But I said, we got all these stains on the floors now that we can't do anything about. And the only thing we can do is hire somebody to sand all the floors and then put down the... Uh, uh, or, or not worry about it. When you die, who's going to care? Who cares? Yeah, I don't care. I don't give a crap. You know. We but, take all of these little pots. Yeah. And we put something underneath it. Well, she... she that she, seals it. Yeah. Yeah, she she put something. Uh, she finally put pa paper and stuff under them, yeah. so you know, so they're okay. Oh, paper's the worst. Huh? Oh, yeah. Paper's not good. That's right. Paper is not good. Oh, really? It'll stick to the floor, make a mess. So what stick do you use? A pie tin, aluminum pie tin. Oh, pie tin. You should see some oh, of these um, pots that she put. She, oh. which, she turned mm -hmm. the whole living room into a goddamn jungle. Sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm going, you know, at least if you were growing vegetables or something, you know. Marijuana, something. Growing pot. Yeah, growing pot. pot. Yeah. <laughs> you, we can do that now. It's not illegal. <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, 
Get the little grow light above it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I can hardly wait till the store is open. I understand that in New, in New York, you can go into these, you know, remember the old, old head shops that they had in towns? Sure. You can go into the old head shops that are still there where they sell the bongs and everything, and they're selling pot. They're selling the edibles. Before it's even, you know, the, the date has come to have sales. Because what they're doing is they're reserving the, uh, the licenses for people to uh, have a store to sell pot uh, for people who have been convicted of marijuana selling in the past. And they've forgiven all their crimes, okay? And now those are the people who are gonna be entitled to get the first 100 store licenses. That's cool. The first, the first one who was in, in prison are the first ones who get the job. Yes, first right? one's in, first one's out. Yeah, right. <laughs> first it's in, amazing. first out. Isn't that cute? No, but I, I think that, you know, because it was such a victimless crime over the years, it is really yeah. nice that we've done something to accommodate that. They did the same thing in New Jersey. All the licenses they're giving out there are to people, if you've been convicted of selling marijuana, line up and get yourself a license. So in California, uh, they are releasing... The people that have been. Uh, I, be, I believe marijuana. Kevin was starting to say something. Oh, sorry. Yes, Kevin. So that must be what they've been doing in Oregon, because I'll tell you what, there ain't no shortage of shops up there. Oh, really? Oh, all up and down I five. They got full blown shops, uh, billboards. Every every hotel we could see, though, we stopped. We stopped at a hotel. I don't know, Springfield. Mm -hmm. Must have been no less than ten shops around us within five blocks. How sophisticated are they? Oh, either junk or sophisticated. They're either junk shops or they're full-on beautiful shops. Yeah. How many shops did you visit? I didn't go to any. I had my daughter with me. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there, there's no shortage of them. Up Portland, uh, anywhere you go, there Oregon is just packed with them. You, they have rows of them. If there are so many of them, I wonder if that's kept the prices down. Because they have to compete know. with each other. I don't know. I don't know. I think they're all about the same, really. I thought the crop, the national crop, or the, the state crop of Oregon was blueberries, or not blueberries, blackberries. They grow everywhere. Marion berries. Marion berries. Yeah, Marion berry. They grow everywhere. No, he was, he was the mayor of Washington, D.C. Twice. We got caught snorting coke. Once, yeah, <laughs> once after the conviction. But um, um, yeah. yeah, but I mean, I, I just think it's I think that was a wonderful idea, you know. Uh, and it was funny because I you know I was telling Josh as I was going down I five there was nothing but you think it would be a very liberal state but I'll tell you what they got a heavy right wing front up there, heavy right wing. Front where up. where in in Oregon? All over up Oregon, yeah. <laughs> really. Heavily, I right. thought that I thought Oregon was like this, you know. Whoop de doo. Yeah, but I, think, but I was. I, think I, probably, I tried to take a picture of this one area just above Roseburg, I think it was, and it was a whole strip row of, uh, you know, shops like a, a truck shop and whatnot, and they had rebel flags and regular flags, no. and signs that were, that were, probably, post you know, uh, you know the poster you know the what do you call it yeah. banners yeah with letters that were freaking four foot high let's go brandon yeah. trump pence we won they lost it was fixed stop the steal for four blocks long with all their pickup trucks parked in front and their flags hanging off the back of Okay, them. but was this a, a certain neighborhood where right-wingers live? No, this was businesses. These were businesses. Oh, boy. And then there was, you know, all up and down I-5, farms where you could see this happening. You know, it was just, I'm just going left and right. And, of course, when you get up in Portland where I was, uh, just south of Portland, the outskirt towns, all over the place, there, you know, flag toting pickup trucks flying around running into people and it was, it was crazy i'm thinking 
I thought this was supposed to be a liberal area, and it was not. I mean, you go downtown Portland where the federal building is, and of course Antifa was there. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> right. But, you know, it, it, it was pretty. Like... You, you don't realize how conservative it is out there. Yeah, it is. God, that's it, it, amazing. It, it, that's it's amazing. Kind, of, it's kind of like my state, okay? The, yeah. the liberal areas or the metropolitan areas like Louisville and Lexington and northern Kentucky right across the Ohio River from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. But out in the rural areas, it's all Trump country. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think it's just that the, the liberals don't make a lot of noise. It's all the conservatives <laughs> making the noise. Cal California is that way, though. You yeah, get true. Out of, you know, if you get out of, Valley. out of Sacramento, San Francisco, L.A., and San Diego area, the rest of the state is red. Yeah, it's true. Well, yeah, I mean, they make Ca most of the noise. So. California is not as liberal as most people think. Uh, yeah, it's just liberal where it's liberal, right? Yeah, you know, and, and very heavily so. But is, yeah. is the Bay Area still pretty liberal all the way around? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Okay. Well, uh, you get out to the like you know Lake Don Pedro, all those areas. Central Valley. Yeah. These guys got all the all the yeah Central Valley. When I go to Lodi, there are a couple trucks with oh, the yeah. flags in the back. Yeah. Like it's wow. uh, election day. Don't tread on me. Oh boy. Well, there's our theme. <laughs> wow. That's all right. Been a nice gathering yeah. tonight. Really faint, faint, faint line. So it's going away. Faint line. Yeah. A Even faint a faint line, line counts as a line. Yeah, it's a line, but it's going away. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I. Really yeah. Stronger than that. Check yourself tomorrow. You'll probably be okay. You know? Yeah. Hey, I'll listen, thank you, Alan, for being here this evening. Um, and uh, thanks to Josh for joining us. Uh, good to have you back. Good to have Kevin back. Uh, good to have Brian here, as always, as well as Charlie or our regulars. And nice to see you when you come by, Mr. Null. Uh, and, and, of course, Jeff, thank you so much. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. Bye. There they go. Okay. That's it for tonight, folks. I will, uh, Jack Bishop is not going to be on tonight, okay? So this is the last show of the evening. Uh, he's uh, just not feeling well, but hopefully he'll be back again uh, on Monday. In the meantime, in between time, I'll see you again on Monday when we do the pop-up show, which will be on Facebook. And then again, okay, we'll be back here on Wednesday at 1030. Yeah, same time, same station in life. And by the way, as always, and it's always my admonition, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.